Tassilai Najer. In the heart of the Sahara, in an almost lifeless territory, you can find mysterious paintings depicting animals and hunters. The rich arrive by air. The narrowest and most adventurous approach the Tassilai Mountains of Algeria in vehicles. With all-wheel drive, traversing gravel terrain, bare rock and shifting sands where the air seems to tremble above the sun at temperatures that can reach 70 degrees Celsius. Fantastic Gazebos Water sculpted bizarre shapes in Tassilai Najer while the Sahara was a world of lakes and rivers. Their destination is not a massive mountain in the true sense of the word, although it rises up to 2,550 meters above sea level, but a 640 kilometers long sandstone plateau, divided into separate massifs, themselves shattered by numerous ravines and ravines, a chaos of rocks, ridges and corners of bald stone. It is a place of strange beauty, rarely matched. The most interesting view is probably at dawn when the ridges are shrouded in fiery gold, red and purple sun, eggplant shadows. Patting the sand around. At this moment, with a touch of imagination, the bare rock turns into skyscrapers, cathedrals, towers, and buttresses. Although the wind loaded with sand particles is the sculptor who shaped the soft rocks into shapes that aroused the imagination, the main architect was water. Sparkling torrents dug ravines, isolated rock spurs, slabs and monoliths, cut ditches and abysses and dug caves. The region, now called the Sahara, once had a humid climate. Many of the ravines and valleys today are dry and dry, located at the southern edge of the desert. They were rivers or lakes at the time. What is desert today was once a fruitful pasture. Desertification was a very slow process, named Tassilai Najer. Means the plateau of rivers, although the area was already dry long before the beginning of the Christian era slash. Bizarre survivors of those wet times, a few crooked and gnarled cypresses stretch their roots in the stony ground in search of water. They are said to be 3,000 years old and to be the last representatives of their generation because, although they produce viable seeds, the soil is too dry for them to germinate. Another survivor of the fertile past is the wild mountain sheep, with huge curved horns, which lives with the little desert mouse and the black stone that builds its nest to cope with the desert climate. Once upon a time, the fauna of the plateau was completely different, giraffes and antelopes, hippos, lions and elephants, and people raised cattle and goats. Evidence of this is the bones. Ancient animals unearthed from the sand, but also much more directly and unquestionably broken paintings discovered among the spurs and rock formations of Tassilai Najer Old paintings reminding of a fertile earth Directly and extremely suggestively, the paintings and images engraved on the rocks and in the caves tell the story of life and death in Tassilai Najer. The Nomadic Tuareg of the Sahara I have always known about the art of Tassilai, but the Western world did not find out until the 1950s, when the French explorer and ethnologist Henri Lot, together with his assistants. He spent two years in the region, identifying and photographing cave paintings. Although most paintings denote the same extreme vitality, the same clarity of lines and the exuberance of colors, the styles and subjects approached classify them in distinct periods. The oldest representations, probably made between 600 and 400 BC, show people with a black appearance hunting elephants, buffaloes, hippos, and a kind of wild sheep with huge horns. Animals of a green and fertile Sahara, or people wearing ceremonial clothing for certain tribal rites, probably. Among them are huge beings of color. White, half-human, half-animal, probably representing gods. The second group, apparently painted between 400 and 1500 BC, represents shepherds herding large herds of longhorned cattle, including giraffes and ostriches. I am too. And banquet, wedding scenes, sleeping children wrapped in animal skins, a woman grinding grain to make flour. In the third period, in the years 1500 to 300 BC, the Sahara had become the barren land of today and was inhabited by new populations. The paintings were squatting soldiers galloping hand drawn by two or three horses, but it is not known for sure if they are invaders, allies or any Mediterranean army fleeing the wrath of the pharaoh. Gradually, around 200 to 100 BC, horses disappeared, their place. 
being taken by the camels sketched as if by a child's hand. Beyond this moment there is no drawing for me. All that remained was an unbearable curiosity. What happened to the people who made them? Did they migrate south with desertification or did they simply die? We will probably never find out.